right, before we get into the fun stuff... There is some details that you guys are gonna have to get real cool with really quickly. One, this blaster is a prototype. It was sent to me, I have a couple of days with it, and then I have to send it back, which is not something I normally do when it comes to reviewing these kinds of blasters or really doing any kind of content on them. Two, Kickstarter is not a store, and this is a Kickstarter project here, so when you pledge money on Kickstarter, it is not a guarantee that you're going to get that thing. It's not a guarantee that you're gonna get anything at all. So keep that in mind when watching this video and getting excited about stuff. And three, I was financially compensated for this video. Because it has such a rapid turnaround, I kind of needed that to, for it to make sense for me to do the video at all, because obviously I'm just kind of doing advertising at this point. And also the fact that I have to quickly get everything going. Yeah, yeah I asked money because I pretty much had to. But that does not mean that my opinions are not my own. At this moment, I have not fired this blaster once. In fact, I've never even powered it on. Banned Blasters does not have advanced screening of this video. In fact, I only told them that I would say anything to them assuming that something goes catastrophically wrong with the prototype that they sent me that didn't work in the way that they told me it would. And now with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's have some fun flaming some foam darts. <laughs> A lot of you out there really like flywheelers, and as somebody who has made god knows how many lipo-powered flywheel blasters, whether 3D printed or just modifications, I can tell you that it's a pretty easy process if you have the right tools, but otherwise, especially if you're younger, using a soldering iron and playing with batteries that could explode is a little scary. And yes, you can buy a pre-soldered strife off Etsy and roll the dice, or try to commission someone to make you one, but what if there was a way for you to get top-of-the-line performance from a single-stage flywheel blaster without having to do anything other than slapping a lipo into it. That's where the band blasters comes in. Actually, funny enough, now that I'm holding this thing, I, I don't even remember if this actually has some kind of name or designation that tells you how quickly we're firing out this video. But this is essentially a hobby level strife but it's already built and ready to go for you. They claim that it can hit up to 180 FPS, which is a very high ceiling for this kind of blaster. Typically, I've seen when you do strife mods, you're kind of pushing it if you get anywhere near to 160. 180s are a pretty high mark. Not impossible, but pretty darn good. I mean, that's punching harder than your pro level blasters for something that is flywheel powered. So it's semi-auto and all that kind of good stuff. The band blasters has a full length magwell, meaning it is compatible with both short and long darts. This one, however, is set up for short darts because uh, those kind of velocity short darts are pretty much all you want to do. And if you want to swap between short and long darts, I have been told that you're going to have to swap the pusher. At least that's how it is in this blaster right here. I don't even have the long pusher. And also, it only has a single trigger. So it revs when you pull the trigger, and then it fires a dart mechanically when you pull the trigger back all the way. And it is a... Uh, by the way, that I can tell by just pulling the trigger, it's a nice geared, smooth trigger, and it's really, really nice with a not a very long travel whatsoever, and as you can tell, very snappy. Voltmeter on the side, important. On off button, even more important. I want every single blaster I get from here on out that's a flywheel powered blaster to have an on off switch because let me tell you, it is extremely annoying when you leave a lipo in a blaster, especially if it has a voltmeter and you might forget about it. Maybe you're at an event and you had it with your gear and didn't turn it off. Happens all the time and it's scary. And with this current design, it's actually recessed quite a bit, so it's not very easy to click in unless you're diligently actually trying to put it in there. In fact, when you press it, it's all recessed in there, so you actually have to really try to unclick that. Stock connection point is optional. You can attach any and strike elite stock to the back of it, or in this case, a worker one, but it is a part that is not mandatory for the blaster and it has a sling loop right there. Jam clearing door, mag release, a very nice one I might add, and it's a huge flared mag well, so good luck messing up your reloads with this thing. Tiny little foregrip at the front, it is tiny, It, I mean, it helps hold the blaster, but it doesn't cover the entire hand. Cool little muzzle right here with another sling point and a barrel right there, which is apparently interchangeable, and I will test the accuracy of this thing because I'm pretty interested to see what the accuracy is out of these flywheels. Now, it is a strife cage, however, the flywheels and everything and the cage were all built by band blasters, but it is compatible 
with strife flywheels and cages. And the grip might be one of the more interesting things because this is literally an AR-15 grip. It is compatible with any AR-15 grip, apparently, and it is about as comfortable as you would expect and customizable. So I think that's all the boring stuff there. I want to finally power this thing up. It is a pretty big battery tray in here. It's a, uh, what is the capacity on this? 1500 milliamp hour battery, which is a pretty large battery. This is a much bigger battery tray than what you'd find on a Strife and you'd have to use like a Strife expanded battery door, which I personally hate because it ruins the like aesthetics of the blaster completely. And it should be noted something about this is that uh, it is in fact symmetrical. That's pretty good because if you know a Strife, the Strife is not symmetrical. This one is. So it should be noted that the grip on this blaster actually covers a rail. That is a normal end strike rail without any locking attachment point, and that is also the rail on the top of the blaster. It is currently an end strike style rail without any locking lug portion. So I could not use any of my sights or grips with this blaster, but as something that has already changed with the final design. I assume it's gone to pick a titty. So. There we go, and very sensitive trigger. It is a, a bit tight in here. I can still get my finger in there, and I think it's just tight, so once you put your finger in there to hold it normally, it's gonna wrap. And they did include, thoughtfully, some cut down chili darts for me to feed into this blaster, which does help because darts are a premium. They are a consumable that I am constantly running out of. So huge thanks to those that like, you know, like, comment, subscribe, that kind of stuff, because uh, I go through a lot of darts. <laughs> Chronograph it is, that's, uh, that's spicy. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's really, that's really good. That's, that's, that's stupidly good. Uh, 180 was an underestimation. All right, so first things up, I'm going to do a grouping test. I don't have a sight, so I'm just going to do the absolute best I can to see what kind of group we can get. Again, I'm expecting this to not have the greatest accuracy because it's a flywheeler, but I'm still open to being surprised. I mean, if you get rid of the outliers, that's not half bad, in my opinion. That's an actual accuracy course. I've got two mags, so let's see what I can do. a lot of misses but that's still pretty good timing that's the power of a flywheeler i guess so in an effortless bid to show you how almost impossible it is to do any kind of actual long range capture footage i have a target there set at 100 feet this blaster will go over 100 feet but if i can hit the target we at least know that you can hit a target. So, see if I can do this in one mag. That trigger is really sensitive. <laughs> Had him fixed it. Not that this is going all that well. For those of you wondering why there isn't like very much good long range footage, I mean, it's pretty windy right now. I'm using a flywheel blaster and while it can hit that distance, 
hitting a target that's on the ground accurately at this distance is kind of difficult. So we'll just empty the mag here. And we're out and I saw a lot of those shots go all over the place because the wind. Now, of course, the all important question is the price. And that's why we leave it to this point in the video to make you watch most of the video to answer this question. And so we can point and laugh at you when you ask this question down below because you didn't actually watch the video. But the answer to that is the Kickstarter will debut with an early bird pricing of $80, followed by $100 after the early bird sells out, and then kicking that up to $120 after the whole Kickstarter thing is done. That being said, Kickstarter should not be the end goal here. They do have plans and even some connections to maybe get this into bigger retailers in the future, which would be a cool thing. But obviously, with it being LiPo-powered, that's going to be a bit of a struggle. Although, they could definitely come up with some kind of other battery source that you would just swap over to a LiPo if you happen to have it to get it in big box shelves. That'd actually be kind of cool and a very smart idea for the future. So, let's talk about the performance that I was getting out of this thing. Those numbers were spicy. Honestly, I've built a lot of flywheelers over the years and I've heard all these things about glass ceilings and everything like that when it comes to flywheels being able to hit a certain performance mark. I wanna point out that I have two FDLs, one that's specifically meant for shooting 40 dart mags full lengths and one that's meant for shooting short darts. Both of them cap out at about 170, 180. Brushless. Single stage. Apparently just paying revamp motors in this prototype. Custom wheels, custom cage, 210 plus. I was told it was gonna hit about 180. Shooting it at the box in front of me clued me otherwise. It seemed incredibly strong. So the good news about all this, I've already talked to the creators. This is the next day. I needed some time to process what was happening is that they could potentially just sell the cage and wheels at some point for those of you that want to build their own blasters. but. Let's put this in perspective. This is going to be an injection molded blaster that you could buy, take out of the box, put a lipo in it, and fire it, and hit over 200 FPS. The wheels are done. It's the actual blaster body itself that's going to be put together and... Like, all that stuff's now figured out. 200 plus FPS flywheeler that you don't have to build. That isn't 3D printed. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. If you think it's expensive to get into LiPos, it's really not. A charger's anywhere from like 20 to 40 bucks. You can go higher, you don't need to. 2S, 3S LiPo, they're typically anywhere from like 10 to 20 bucks depending on the capacity. So it hits just about every single mark. And since I've uh, taken the time to talk to the creators after the fact, uh, apparently they're going to work on just converting this to be a short dart only blaster, which I applaud. I think that's definitely the direction to go because if you're hitting this kind of performance marks, what's the point of having the ability to shoot full length darts? And then on top of that, what's the point of having it swap between full length and short darts when you have to take the entire blaster apart when the entire point of the blaster is buying one that I don't have to take apart that's already ready to go out of the box. So yeah, I'm pretty freaking excited because this is going to put high performance flywheel power into a lot more people's hands at a pretty darn affordable price in my opinion. I really hope this pans out. There will be a link down below to where you can find the Band Blasters website and you can get signed up for when the Kickstarter goes live. And I'm gonna highly recommend you do because if you like flywheelers, which uh, seems like a good portion of people like their flywheelers, I'd expect you guys to pay attention to something like this because who doesn't want another high performance flywheeler that's like already ready and made to go, seriously. But most importantly, this project is not finalized. The basic idea of the blaster is done, but you have some small suggestions that could make it into the blaster before it actually gets out there. Obviously, they would love to hear it. This is a blaster built for this community. So leave your comments down below. Be thoughtful, be respectful, but don't be afraid to let them know what you think and possibly what changes they could make to this blaster before it goes up for its final Kickstarter debut. That's all I've got for you. And I don't know why I'm saying that's all I got for you because what I got for you sitting right here is a 200 plus FPS flywheel blaster that costs at worst 120 bucks.
I'm Walcott by 7 thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Chances are, if you got to the end of this video, you like what we do here, so please hit like, get subscribed, leave a comment down below, because if you help the channel grow, you help the hobby grow. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You gotta up, up,